explain to our viewers just who is Nicola Ulo? He really was the most popular minister in the cabinet. Why was he so popular? He's really well known to the French public. I mean, outside France, he's not as well known. But here, uh, he wasn't an ordinary minister because back in the last decade, he had his own TV show called Ushuaia, which was very well known. And that gave birth to a uh, satellite TV channel, which was devoted to environmental issues and to nature. Uh, so people knew him long before he became a minister. Um, he also uh, had has something called the Nicola Hulot Foundation for Nature and Humans. And this, uh, had, well, it gained uh, hundreds of thousands of followers uh, in the 2000s. And this was actually something that had so much influence on the French political landscape at the time that uh, the president back then, Nicolas Sarkozy, uh, tried to uh, recruit Nicola Hulot. Uh, and indeed, all the candidates in that election in 2007 uh, signed something called uh, the Ecological Logical pact with Hulot's organization because essentially they were worried about him running on on a sort of green ticket against the established political candidates and they were worried about such a candidacy. So as a result of his political power, long before he came a minister, as a result of that power, uh, French presidents have tried to keep him close uh, to stop him essentially challenging them. That was the case with Sarkozy, but also the case with François Hollande, the previous French president who also kept uh, Hulot close had Hulot advising him on certain issues. It was actually quite a coup uh, for Macron to, uh, to recruit Hulot, so to speak, because before that he'd never entered uh, a French government. And so it's really a loss for Macron. Um, it's, it's a slap in the face, particularly when you think of the way that Hulot resigned. He did it on French radio. He announced his decision and he said, no, I have not informed uh, the prime minister or uh, the president of my decision. So that already says something. Mm. Uh, given that he is so popular and that this was a coup for Macron, as you said. So what does this mean for Macron's government going forward? Well, you know, Hulot said uh, that he, when he was resigning, he hoped that uh, this resignation would not be used by uh, party political ends. But of course, it was almost immediately. And we've had a slew of reactions from across the French political spectrum, uh, all of Macron's opponents, essentially, wherever they come from, saying this shows something about the nature nature of Macron and the Macron government that, you know, it's sort of coming apart at the seams. We've heard this kind of commentary throughout the morning from various uh, opposition forces in France. Um, it does make uh, Macron's coming back from, you know, the holidays, this this restart um, at the end of August, it makes it a bit a bit difficult, of course. Uh, and uh, the, the only thing one can say, I think, is that Macron is, you know, he's shown himself uh, to be someone who is not really thrown off course uh, by anything, or he hasn't been so far, uh, neither lower opinion polls, nor strikes and protests, uh, nor the Benalla affair earlier this summer. He's obviously got a lo lot of determination to press ahead. The next uh, thing that his government has to grapple with is the budget for 2019, which is a thorny issue because French economic growth is not as strong as it had been forecast this year. So that's going to lead to some very difficult decisions about what spending is actually going to go on. Uh, but so far, uh, Macron, you know, he's been dubbed Jupiter, a sort of Roman god who kind of presses on regardless. And of course, he will be looking to weather this particular storm as he has been trying to weather other ones.